Hi there. Um, so I am here to talk about skateboarding, despite the suit and tie. <laughs> um, my name is Jason LaMarche, and I'm a director with the Vancouver Skateboard Coalition. And it's a group of young people who've worked with the city council for over 10 years in advocating safer skateboarding facilities and programs for youth in the Vancouver area. And in fact, we've worked with lots of different communities outside of our area, and we're always looking for more people to work with and collaborate with on positive youth projects. Now, what I'm here to speak about today is uh, the history of the Vancouver community, uh, v Vancouver skateboard community, and the Parks Board. In 2005, October 31st to be exact, Parks Board ratified an agreement that was to set aside $375,000 for youth facilities. Uh, part of that plan was to contain skateboard um, elements and programming for youth. Now, it's been two years since then, and this capital plan is about to expire. There have been no new skateboard facilities or programs put forth with those monies. Now, that's disturbing enough in itself. Um, one thing to consider is in Vancouver, there are six skateboard facilities located throughout um, the greater area, five of which were built from the period of 2001 to 2005. City of Vancouver was averaging about one new skate park every year until 2005. Since then, we've had absolutely nothing, which means at one time where the city of Vancouver had recognized and was meeting the needs of these skateboarders and the user groups that use these facilities as well, such as BMXers and inline skaters, that's now off the radar. It's no longer a priority, and in fact, as I mentioned earlier, monies that were allocated, where are they? Um, in my hand is the Skateboard Strategy for Vancouver. This is a special document prepared by Parks Board on October 31st, 2005. In this plan, they outlined several different initiatives, eight actions to be taken. Four were specific actions, four were more exploratory clauses. In the first four, they're promising, or rather, they did promise, to build more parks and to distribute them geographically throughout the city of Vancouver. Because a lot of the facilities that are built now aren't meeting the needs of people out near, you know, the south end of uh, Vancouver, or say, downtown in the west end. Now, what does this mean? What's the, um, what's the ramification for this? It means we have 10-year-old children who like to skateboard, and the city of Vancouver has now prevented them from doing that under the supervision and company of their parents at a local facility. Where are they going? The demand is still there. Kids are, you know, they're getting on a bus, and they're either going to another facility, or they're skating the natural elements downtown in Vancouver back alleys. Is this right? Currently, um, it seems like there's been a dramatic shift in attitude from Parks Board and City Council. Now, instead of um, creating a holistic youth acti activity strategy, they've broken it down and have put all their resources into traditional sports only. Things like skateboarding, BMXing, inline skating, those have gone to the wayside and their needs are not being met. Uh, another thing is that this approach has lots of different impacts on the user groups. What message is the city sending to these youth who are no longer being taken seriously and who aren't being brought into any kind of you know, civic engagement with their local authorities? They're being pushed into the streets to engage with police authorities and to encounter all those pleasant situations that occur. So what is the solution to these problems? Well, if the Parks Board wishes to follow through on their word to provide a good mix of facilities and programs to youth in Vancouver, they need to backtrack and find those resources that were allocated back in 2005. Because that was a promise made to the youth of Vancouver, and I'd like to see that fulfilled. Also, Parks Board um, should recognize that skateboard parks are really good investments. There are multi-user facilities that don't just meet the needs of skateboarders, as I mentioned earlier. BMXers, inline skateboarders, they can all use these facilities at one time. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never played basketball 
with my friends while they played hockey and you know lacrosse all in one area. It just doesn't happen. So in terms of you know productivity index, it's a multitude of user groups that are really getting their money's worth out of these facilities. The other thing is we need to be cognizant of major lobby groups such as Activity Communities Vancouver. Nothing against them as a group, but they have proposed $85.8 million in the new capital plan for traditional sporting facilities and programs. That's great, but is it silencing the needs of non-traditional sports? <coughs> it's something to be mindful of when considering the decision-making process at Parks Board and at City Council. So what is at stake, really, when we simplify it? Um, the reality is, if the City of Vancouver does not fund new skateboard parks in this capital plan right now, we're going to have a gap. It's going to be about at least seven years before new skateboard facilities are built. We had funds earmarked for this in 2005. That means a child who is 13 years old in 2005 is going to be 20 years of age before a facility is built to meet their needs. Now, the thing is, the demand for these facilities is not diminishing. It is still rising and it's still on the go. Demand is going to keep going up as downtown and all, all over Vancouver is densifying, and just as more people are switching from team-oriented sports to more individual activities like snowboarding and skateboarding and so on. So it's, aware, it's, it's very important to be aware of these emerging trends and to catch them early because we're playing with the lives of our children. They need somewhere to go and it's our responsibility to provide these places for them. Um, the bottom line here is opportunity. Parks Board and the City of Vancouver has an opportunity to take the lead in providing a progressive, holistic mix of youth facilities and programs for youth all in the city. This is something not every city does, but it's something that we can capitalize on and really take a lead in structure and programming in Vancouver. Um, finally, we need to realize that skateboard facilities in and of themselves, as I said, are a good return on investment, but looking at the under underpinnings of where we would like to help shape society in general, they're really good in terms of they're enviro-friendly facilities. There's no grass in a skateboard park. They're low water usage. They don't use any. And not only that, but by encouraging people to skateboard, bike, and rollerblade, I think we're also encouraging alternative modes of transportation. Are we creating lifelong habits that we need to take on today? I think so. He's kind of scaring me at this one. Now once I lose the bike. Well, <laughs> The final thought is, um, I'm disappointed a little bit to see that we haven't made progress in the last three years, but it's not to say we can't make progress today or tomorrow by putting skateboarding on the map and prioritizing it, not as a level D or however the ranking system fits in their capital plan, but making sure that these thousands of children will have facilities tomorrow and today. Back alleys of Vancouver are not a place for 10-year-old children to participate in the sport they love. Thank you. Here, here.